Okay, this is the first video of the tutorial series to create MMO style camera and controls um, like you would see in World of Warcraft or Guild Wars 2. Um, let me show you what it's going to look like and then we'll dive into this first video which is setting up the project. Alright, so right off the bat I have a free camera that I can orbit around with a left drag click. I can do the same with a right drag, but the right drag is changing where they will end up walking. So if I point with my right drag over here and then push W for move forward, that's where we head. So if I hold down the right mouse button, I can aim the character around, okay? A and D rotate, unless you're holding the right mouse button, in which case they strafe. Q and E strafe normally. If I'm looking, if I change the free move camera, but I move forward, it goes like that. Uh, but the character does look towards where the cursor is. That's just part of this character's animation. They will just look at wherever the um, wherever the camera is going. I think um, this won't go into this tutorial. Won't go into this character's animation. This is the free serif character, and I'll show you where you get that and how to add it in. Um, oh, hand zooming you can scroll in and out for zooming. Okay. Let's get started. So I'm going to open up a blank project. So what you want to do is first you're going to need uh, Seraph, the character. So you'll find it in the marketplace. Uh, search for it. It's free. You're going to get it. Um, you're going to add it to a project. So what we're going to do is we're just going to hit launch. And we're going to do this off of the third person. Uh, template. Okay, select games here, next, third person, next. Uh, we'll call this uh, just tutorial. Okay, then what you're going to do is you're going to go back to, you're going to find your Serith, you're going to add it to project. I called it tutorial, add it to the project. If you haven't already downloaded it, it'll download. Give it a second to add. What we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to um, break the default controls and kind of redo a few things. We're going to have a custom player controller and um, okay here it is. So in your root content here you'll see Paragon Serith. Uh, so the first thing we have to do is set up the project inputs. Well, first let me just show you. Let me demo Serith really quick here just so you can see how she works. They give you a blueprint, just drag it in, okay? And it's not set up to take control of her right off the bat. So what you can do is you can click her, type pawn over here, auto possess player zero. That should stick us in her at the beginning. Now the default controls for Seraph is, notice I have no mouse cursor visible. She moves and looks wherever I point the mouse. She runs that way. So I mean, this is, I mean, this is really great controls, honestly. Um, A and D strafe. Um, the mouse left click does the weapon. Um, Q and E do nothing. Uh, but if you have an interface, you want the mouse cursor to be always visible, so you can move around and click different parts of your interface. So. Um, this is really nice character control, but it's not quite what we 
blonde. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to, in this folder, we can just go ahead and work in this folder. Uh, we're going to create a player controller. Okay, so you right click here, class, player controller. We'll call it my player controller. Okay. And we also need a custom game mode. I'll tell you what each of those do here in a second. Call it my game mode. Okay. So looking at the Serith blueprint here, we're going to be modifying the movement input slightly, not too much. Uh, we're going to modify this mouse input a lot. Jump will stay the same. Touch input. So we don't need touch input, you can delete that. Um, don't need this, can delete that. Gamepad input, don't need that. Okay. All right, so next. Okay, go ahead and delete that from your world here. We're going to switch Serith back to disabled for auto possess player. And if I'm going too fast, just slow down the playback speed uh, or speed it up as needed. Um, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to edit our um, our game mode. Okay. So our game mode over here, we want the default player controller class to be the player controller we set up. The controller uh, is kind of like an interface between the human and the character. Okay, the default pawn class we're going to set to be the Serith player character. Okay, that's the default. So go ahead and save, compile for now. We'll stop there. Um, and now you can actually delete Serif from the level. Uh, delete that network player start. And now since we've set up, um, oh, hold on. Go to world settings, game mode, my game mode, and then verify that it's the Serith player for default pawn and the my player controller for the player controller class. Okay. So now if we save, oh, let's drop a player start in here. Now, since it's the default plays, when we hit play with our default, we get Serif. Okay. All right, a few other things we're going to change here. Uh, let's look at the player controller. Okay, so the player controller here, there's not going to be a lot here right off the bat. Um, we are going to change our yaw and pitch scale. So uh, I'm just going to change the sign to this to two point to positive for yaw and pitch. Basically, this is saying um, your controller, when you move the mouse, that delta ca calculates is going to get multiplied up. It's going to get scaled by these. So if you want more sensitivity on your yaw left and right and your pitch up and down, you can up these values. Um, we're not going to do it here. You'll see later. Uh, we'll we'll up the, we'll make things more sensitive in the blueprint rather than here because this will hard code it for every pawn that this controller happens to take control of, and we don't want to do that. Okay. The other things we're going to do in this player controller is here: show mouse cursor, enable click events, and you can turn off touch events. Uh, mouse over events too. That'll be good. And you can go ahead and save and compile that. Um, let me make sure we're good. OK. Now into the Serif player character blueprint. That's our character here. Click on the um, player character here. Make sure that all of these are unchecked. Um, 
you want these unchecked. Okay, and we also want, I think that's it for that. Yep, you want those unchecked. Then go to the character movement component over here on the left. And we're going to scroll down and find rotation settings. Verify that it's orient rotation to movement. Leave that checked. So that's just going to say it's going to point your character in the direction of your movement. Um, and here we got, there's a couple different rotations we're going to be worrying about. Rotation of the camera, ro the control rotation, which um, dictates which way you will move once you start moving, and then the actual static mesh actor rotation. Um, and this will having this checked here will make sure to point the actual mesh character in the direction of your movement. So leave that one checked. All right, we're going to get a few more things set up, and then we'll uh, then we'll call it for this video and move on to. Um, the, the code in the next video. Uh, go inside your player controller and we're going to create a couple variables. And we're putting them in the player controller because we want them to basically exist no matter what pawn we're possessing. So maybe currently we're controlling the Sereth character, character, but perhaps later in the game you want to control a different thing. Um, but we want our zoom to be con we're going to put our zoom here. So we're making the max camera boom length. Okay. And that's going to be a float over here. Okay. And we're going to have the min camera boom length. This is the closest your camera can zoom into the character. And then you're going to have a zoom sensitivity. And the zoom sensitivity is. Uh, how much you're going to zoom in with each click. So let's go ahead, compile it to get the default value to show up, and we're going to put 150 there. The min camera boom length, we're going to leave as zero. We'll let you zoom all the way up close, and the max we'll put at a thousand. You can make these whatever you want. So you're going to compile that and save. Uh, so the next video, we will get into um, setting up the zoom. That's the easiest thing. We'll knock that out first.